Hello hockey fans, and welcome back to another video. Since I began making videos on this channel back in 2015, one thing that I've always wanted to do is interview a professional hockey player. Whether they were a mainstay in the NHL for many years, they have plied their trade in Europe for most of their career, or they even suited up in the elite ice hockey league here in my homeland, I have always wanted to sit down and have an informal conversation with a pro player, either retired or still active, so I can learn more about the person behind the jersey and really understand what it's actually like to play this sport as a full-time job. Well, earlier this week, I had the chance to do exactly that, as on this week's episode of the Europuck podcast, I was lucky enough to conduct an 80-minute interview with British goaltender Ben Bounds. Bounds has spent the last six seasons as the starting netminder of the Elite Ice Hockey League's Cardiff Devils, where he won a number of awards and was consistently seen as one of, if not the best goaltender in the league year after year. Not only that, Bounds has also played 18 games in the Champions Hockey League against some of the best teams in Europe from the Swedish Hockey League, the Finnish Liga and the Swiss National League, and is currently living in Austria, having signed with the Ice HL's Graz 99ers for the current 2021 season. Now some of you folks across the pond might recognise Bounds' name too, but you can't quite figure out where you heard it from. Well that is because Bounds is also the starting goaltender of Team Great Britain, and stood between the pipes for his national side at the 2019 IIHF World Championships. You know, the one where GB returned to the top flight for the first time since 1994, got absolutely pummeled by Canada and the US, but beat France on the final day to clinch their place at the next tournament while chanting, we're shit and we know we are. Yeah, that team GB. So for this week's Sunday upload, I've compiled a few clips from that interview for you to enjoy. I know I've been posting a lot about my podcast recently, and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but given how great of an opportunity this was, and how pumped I was to talk to Bounds, I figured you might be interested to hear a professional goalie's perspective on such topics as fan backlash after games, or what it's like to face Jack Eichel, Mark Stone, or even Patrick Kane in a more relaxed interview than what we usually see within hockey media. And besides, I did a two hour live stream playing some NHL 94 Rewind yesterday and have some great videos lined up for the month of December. So there's something else for you to watch this weekend and plenty of content to follow in the coming weeks. But without further ado, here's a few clips from my interview with Team Great Britain's starting netminder, Ben Bounds. I, I guess this is a question, this might be more specific to you because obviously everybody handles things differently, but how much do you potentially pay attention to kind of the fan responses after games? Uh, when we were younger, uh, that's one of the problems I had when I first went to Cardiff. Um, you're in a bit more, you know, a lot bigger spotlight than what I was at all. And you, you see it all and, and you let it get to you a little bit, but that's just an experience and then you learn to deal with it. I think the hardest bit for me with the social media, what fans don't realise is when they're really getting in at you, it's not you that it affects, it's your family. Yeah. Um, obviously your parents and that, it's, it's pretty bad. I know my mum was pretty bad for it. Um, she probably still is, but I make sure I don't talk to her about it now. <laughs> um, something else you learn growing up. But no, I mean, that's what they don't see. It's your family that have to deal with all the, the crap that's being thrown at you, basically. Um, I had to watch what I said there and make sure I didn't swear. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the crap that's thrown at you and they obviously see that and they deal with it differently to you. Whereas for me, it's just a guess, well, there's a reason why that person's paying to watch me play and isn't on the ice coaching me or isn't on the ice playing against me. Uh, I care about so, certain people's opinions, but not necessarily some random fan who's, who's giving me abuse for letting a goal in. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? Whereas obviously the, the hardest bit is obviously just seeing your family have to, have to go through that. But again, it's something that they learn and they have to get used to. And unfortunately, these days it's, it's part and parcel of the job. And I think it, it's such a tricky situation, especially in the elite league, uh, because stuff like Twitter is so big over there. Social media is huge for the clubs. They want you on there, but they also don't want you to be affected by it. So it's kind of a catch-22. You, you're going to see it all, but then you have to kind of just learn to learn to ignore it. Whereas here, the social media side of things aren't quite as big. Um, that I think they're bigger on maybe Facebook and Instagram than Twitter. So you, you don't necessarily see it a lot. I mean, I rarely use Facebook now, apart from to promote uh, stuff. And yeah, and Instagram is it's a nicer place than Twitter, really. So it's it's always easy for people to say stuff when they're behind a the phone or behind a keyboard. Whereas to your face, they're, they're probably not going to say that. So once you learn that and you get that through your head, it, it's a lot easier to take. Speaking of of away games and kind of the experience of playing in other rinks, uh, especially 
during your time in the Champions Hockey League? Because obviously you've been with Cardiff playing in the Champions Hockey League for several years now. Um, you've obviously had the chance to go to some of the best rinks in Europe, whether it be you know Sweden, Austria, with uh, going to Graz, like you mentioned. What what are kind of the how obviously there's a huge step up with some of these teams compared to the elite league and you mentioned earlier how you know you have to kind of have your head on a swivel the entire night you know you're going to be in for a bit of a rough ride because you're playing against some of the best players on this side of of, of the world but but kind of what are some of the the memorable moments for you uh within the champions soccer league because we have a lot of fans across europe that um, we have Swiss fans and, and Swedish fans. We have people that pay attention to the, the Champions Hockey League and it's kind of a big tournament they like to follow. And we're kind of obviously seen as like that underdog country in the Champions Hockey League that, yeah, we had Nottingham go to the knockout stages once, but we're, we've, never ne- we've never necessarily been one of those nations that, you know, we, we're we always competing for the championship. Obviously, Fralunda wins it practically every single year. So, you know, if you're going up against them, it's going to be a bit of a rough ride. So, so what, what's, what's kind of... Year. Yeah, so, so what's kind of your experience with the Champions Hockey League was it did you find that the more you played in it the more comfortable you got did you find that it helped you get your position and kind of feel more comfortable now that you've shifted over to Austria because you've played a little bit against some of those teams I think it was definitely huge for me um once you get to play at an international level that's not just the world championships um but I think one of the most exciting things for the CHL and the elite league is just seeing how much the teams have come on in the elite um I remember watching the first year that Panthers were ever in it and um, some of the results didn't quite go the way that obviously they wanted but um, you, you kind of just wanted them to do well even even though they, they're your enemies during the season you want them to do well you want them to mm-hmm. represent Britain and I think the next two years after that was Sheffield uh, you're always looking to, yeah, can, we can do better than that we can do better than that but uh, but no I mean the, but then you actually get to the CHL and you realise the, the level that it's at um, I can remember the first game we ever played was in Davos so obviously playing in that arena, um, they, they didn't have a full stadium as they weren't at that point of playing an elite league team there, but they still had all the, the fans uh, sat behind me making some noise. Our fans were going crazy on the other end. And you know, we I think we ended up losing about 10-1 that game. We I think we flew in late. And I think the whole kind of organisation maybe miss, uh, maybe underestimated it a little bit. I mean, we, we, we got there pretty late on the night before. It's at altitude. Obviously, Cardiff's right at sea level. And you could see... Um, I mean, right, right in the pregame, uh, the pregame skate in the morning, actually, I can remember doing some movement at the end of practice and God, why do I feel so tired? And then it went until after when it suddenly clicked, oh, we're at altitude. There's, there's no wonder that we felt like that. And um, we played in Liberec a few days later and we were, we were way better. But, uh, and then we ended up beating Davos in Cardiff. But I think like the results, like the, the year that Nottingham went through, you, you switch back to that first year Nottingham was in, there's no way in, in there's no way in hell, basically, that mm. Nottingham are going to get get through yeah. with, with that level of players and that caliber. And then, what was it? Four years later, something like that. Three or four years later, all of a sudden they've, they've topped the group and mm. they've gone through. And then last year, I mean, we were in a group with Fralunda, Mountfield, Graz, and and us, and we were top of the group until we played for London twice. I mean, if if Fralunda had won the first two games like they should have, <laughs> we would have been out of that group straight away. But obviously, things just didn't go our way. And I can remember. Um, Winning the game in Graz and finishing the the first four games at the top of the table, and people think, "Oh, we got a chance here." And you kind of looking, thinking, "Oh, yeah, but for London, need two wins to kind of get through as well." So, yeah, it went. Those games went okay for the first two periods, and then I think they they just took over. Then I think uh, they they were fitter, they were more skilled, they were faster, obviously, and yeah, it just the, the third period just just went good for us. Uh, one of the questions uh, that we had, and a fan question as well. Who's the best player that you think you've faced? Were there any players that, you know, they'd be coming at you maybe on a breakaway, half breakaway, and you thought, this is going to be a difficult puck to stop? Um, I don't know, because, you know, all the all the players are so different. It's, it's kind of like goaltender. We know one goaltender is the same. They all bring different things. And, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, there's different kind of shot techniques. There's, people have different releases. They can disguise stuff better. And, but then someone else might not disguise it as well, but their shot's more accurate or harder. And it's it's a weird one. But I mean, one of them that sticks out is obviously uh, Patrick Kane at the World Championships because he, he, you never knew whether he was going to pass or, or shoot. So it was just a case of holding my ground as much as I could be getting ready to load one leg and, and just fly across. Um, I've been setting up uh, Jack Eichel for quite a few one-timers on that power play. Um, 
but yeah, there's people like that. And obviously then you play against Canada and you got like Mark Stone and people. And again, they're, they're a totally different game, but they're just as effective sometimes. So um, yeah, it's kind of hard. I mean, uh, one thing that does stick in my mind is when we played Slovakia for the first time. So in the, in the pre, uh, pre-tournament game in Poprad, um, I can remember Kiefer going through some penalty shots. So they must have known that we we're having penalty shots at the end of it. Um, and he showed me uh, Thomas Tatar's move. And the, the guy actually pulled this ex- exact same move and I managed to to get a piece of it. So that's one thing that did stick out for me, that even though I knew it was coming, it was still... I, I could keep up with it, got a piece of it and, and poked it away from him. And then he tried to, uh, tried shooting the second one, actually, which luckily I saved. But I'm thinking those refs <laughs> might have given it him. But, um, but no, that, that kind of sticks in that you know it's coming. Um, but it's still... So good that it was it was hiding it till the last minute and in my head I'm thinking, oh, is it actually gonna come? Is it, is it gonna do something totally different here and just put it between my legs or something? So uh yeah, it's, I can't really pick out one player that's that's better than all the others, but um th- there's been a hell of a, a lot of good players that we've come up against. It, does it register with you in a way that it kind of does for fans when you know obviously you uh the the 2019 tournament you went and played against some of if not the best hockey players on the entire planet um nhl superstars not just international superstars when you recount this story like you're just saying the name jack eichel and patrick kane and thomas tatar and mark stone so casually as if like that's just you know like oh you know that's just part of the business you know but like did you kind of have that moment where you were thinking oh my goodness it's like I'm playing against some of the best players on the planet right now. Um, not right at the time. I think um, <laughs> I'm, I'm more into the goalies than the players because I'm just a bit of a goalie geek. <laughs> but uh, I can remember in the Canada game, at the end of the game, obviously you, you all peed off because you, you've just lost. I think you, you end up losing like 8 or 9 nil or whatever it were. Um, and I can remember looking across and seeing Murray's name on there and just and realising all of a sudden I'm, that guy's won two Stanley Cups. Uh, they were played, and then you're like, "Well, I've just played against Carter Hart, who is a lot younger than me." And you think that, in theory, older people should be like, "Oh, he's, he's younger. Just who cares? Like, don't need to think about him." But then you're like, "Well, it's such a good goal. He's, he's turning that that franchise around." Um, yeah, and that's when it probably clicked for the first time ever. But then again, it wasn't until um, after the Worlds when you kind of went home and we realized exactly what we'd done and what we'd achieved. Um, that then it did it did start sinking in the players that you've been playing against. But when to be fair, it's just a case. It sounds a bit nonchalant, but it's and not as exciting as what people probably want to hear. But then it's, it's your job, and you're you're put on the ice to play against whoever's against you, whether that's someone from the ENL or someone from the NHL or NIHL to the NHL. Uh, that probably sounds <laughs> a bit better. Uh, you know what I mean? Like whether you're playing Swindon or Steel Dogs, or you're playing Team USA or like Team Canada, it, it don't matter. You, you, you're put on there to do your best. You're put on there to try and win. And, and that's what you do. It don't matter who you're against. Obviously, you're aware of these players. You're aware of the, their attendances and, and where the shoe or the players that, that they usually set up. Uh, but, but that's about as far as it goes, really. It's, they're, they're just another player that I want to stop at the end of the day. So there you go, folks. That was a little snippet of my chat with GB goaltender Ben Bounds. If you want to check out the rest of the 80-minute interview, head on over to the Europuck Podcast YouTube channel and support my other hockey-related venture. Go and subscribe if you want to help. We're almost at 500 subscribers. Maybe listen to some of the other episodes if you really enjoyed what you heard. We've got plenty of episodes up there from the last couple of months, so I do hope you go and check it out and enjoy, folks. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.